Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the X4 Beginner's Guide and today we've got a few things that we want to go through with really getting things going with our own station which you can see lovely just the sat waiting for us in space doing absolutely nothing at the moment because we've got no manager for it now I've let the game run on for a little bit just to build the station and to get ourselves some credits so we can actually do some stuff with it uh, now we're in our spacesuit at the moment, so I thought we'd step outside and get a fresh breath of fresh air. And I figured I'd show you the outside of the station because it looks all fancy and dandy. Now, before we get into the guide, first thing I want to say is if you've got anything at all you're struggling with with your gameplay, uh, because obviously I do things slightly different in mine, and there are other things you can do. If there's anything at all you want me to go through and give you any assistance with, or if you just want me to cover for you know, the sake of the guide or whatever it is, whatever reason it is, Hit me up in the comments section, leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll get that covered in one of the next episodes that's coming up. However, this episode's going to be about setting up this station to run and operate itself and make us some money, because this station effectively can make us some good money. So we're going to do that right away. But the first thing I'm going to do is get myself back into my ship, which I'm going to do the hard way and find it. There it is. So I'm going to set myself in there, then we're going to come back and we're going to set up our manager to operate this the space station and uh, earn us some money. See you all shortly. And welcome back everybody and we're back inside our ship. Now the one thing I just want to do quickly because I know some of you may want to know how do you get in and out of your ship. The first thing you do is you go back here to your transporter room. It's just at the back of your ship. Use your transporter room and use space suit. Confirm that and it takes you outside of your ship and you're slightly hovering about. Draws are exactly the same as what you'd expect in a ship. You'll float away slightly and the door will close behind you normally. It takes a minute or two for it to close. There you go. And then to get back into your ship, you'd select it, Elite Vanguard, and then you'd press your F button, request docking permission. Docking granted. And just like you would normally do, is you line yourself up nicely and you'd use your thrusters. Now, your thrusters are controlled just like your speed is, and you can boost your thrusters by pressing the tab key. But bear in mind, you do have inertia in space, so you've got a reverse thrust to stop yourself. The various other bits and bobs. It's not too bad going up and down with your W and S keys. They tend to level themselves out. But that's just how you get in and out of your ship in case you ever wonder. Now, let's get onto our map and let's have a look at our station. We're already here, as mentioned. We want to dock our ship to our station because I've got this ship with three crew on it. So we've got somebody lined up to be the manager. Now what I have done whilst I was waiting around is I actually swapped the captains on my ship. So I placed a low level captain on this ship because this is just my runabout. I placed a higher captain into my into my uh, service crew. So if we have a look at our elite vanguard here. You'll see that we've got a low level pilot on there now. And there's Fisty here. He was our current pilot. Has a high morale, which is what we're going to use in our management. Now, he's got no management skills, but we should be fine. We should be able to build him up quite easily. And obviously, he's got his two-star pilot in there. But we don't need a decent pilot for this. We could have used this pilot on someone else, and it could have boosted it up. But I'm not too worried about that at this stage, because now we've got two stations, we can manipulate things to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. And we can use the ships that we haven't previously been able to do Um anything with really and use them now on the station so let's go ahead and let's dock so we can set them up to dock by click on my ship vanguard uh, click on the light icon there there we go dock at just remove this because it's got an unfly in there first so we'll remove that order so then we'll directly fly to station and dock Whilst that's docking, I want to go through a couple of things. We set this up so that it could do ore materials. So it'll take ore and energy cells and produce refined metals. Refined metals will then be sold on at this stage to our AI com um, compatriots. And hopefully we get something from it. Uh, and a decent wage, hopefully, from it. Uh, refined metals is usually a good way to go because most things use refined metals anyway, so... As you can see, we're on red at the moment. We've got no energy cells, no ore. We've also got no manager who will buy them for us. But we want to stop the manager buying energy cells and ore. Because we have both. We have a station producing energy cells. And we have a station. Uh, sorry, we have ships that can collect ore for us. 
the first thing we want to do is we want to restrict trade with other factions now that will restrict any trade with a faction we want to set the price to its lowest then credits or its highest it doesn't really matter to what we'll say it's the highest 22 credits that'll be of no problem there automatic buy amount so that'll make the manager there you go the manager will create the buy orders uh, until stock levels reach this amount so it'll set itself up automatically Don't worry about that we're going to do the same for or restrict trade you don't need to worry about the pricing don't need to worry about anything else really so we're restricted so now we will only buy from ourselves for energy cells and ore the refined metals we don't want to restrict because that is what we want to sell now if you have a look here automatic pricing 58 credits and 22 credits that's a rough estimate of the maximum price you can set for automatic pricing for refined metals is 207 credits so already you can see there is a price difference here but as you can see we're not setting anything up and we've got no workforce Wait, either orders. we're not going to worry too much about our workforce at the present moment we will deal with that but we haven't got a habitat for our workforce but the station should be absolutely fine as it is workforce uh, basically makes it start if you're producing one and you've got it up to 100 percent then you'll obviously produce another one because it's maximized okay so we're now docked at our station you can do exactly the same with this as you do with any other station. You have a wander around. You can have a look at your awesome station that you've built. This is yours. You own it. Don't press the return to station button like I do. There's your station. There's your little docking port that you've got. There's your production facilities that are there. I do like this for the quality of the builds and stuff like that. You can see, is it still being built? Looks like one of them's not quite finished yet. Yeah, look at that. It's being built. It's pretty smart the way it looks like that. That's just a little bit of a... Yeah, it looks good. This is why I like to have it where they don't interject. You can have it where the modules interject with each other. But I kind of like to go for a nice aesthetic. And I like to have it where it's set right. So there you go. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we've got plenty of cash in the bank. We're still doing our trades. Nothing else has changed. The other thing we did was we placed two mining ships here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set our new pilot, or sorry, our old pilot to become our new manager. So we're going to right click that, we're going to go to our crew, we're going to pick our Viv, no it's not our Viv, the wrong Elite Vanguard, I do apologise. Attention all departing pilots, right click pilots information, seen in the sector. crew, Be careful. there he is, there's work somewhere else for me. We're on the station, so we want the reach. Like the reach. Like roll manager. Assign. We now have a manager for our station. We're back to our property owned, to our refinery, or to our managed funds. And this here is where we can set up a few things. Now it's still got a little bit of construction to do, so it's that you know, obviously it's finishing it off. So we just need to keep an eye on that to accept that estimate. And then I'm going to offer the estimate for the station upkeep remember it can't buy anything from another station or anywhere else it's only providing for our own so now we need to deal with that because at the moment he will do absolutely nothing still you've got a, little, a few other bits of information there don't worry about that we're not into that at the moment what we want to do is we want to set up so it's going to start producing materials for us but the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get our first little mining vessel here we're going to right click our station and we're going to assign role as an alpha miner. We're then going to take the second ship. And we're going to assign this as a alpha miner. They will both now mine for this station. Now two large miners may be a bit too much for the station. But hopefully we can kind of offset that with um, selling it. Now, we do want to sell it to stations, but we also want to sell it to other factions who come to our station as well. But we're a little bit out of the way. So the first thing I want to do is, I do know, from viewing it, that we have a ship at the moment doing absolutely nothing. Our Argon Prime ship here, Mercury Vanguard. I'm going to set this up. This is a trader. And we're going to set trader for trader. And we're going to set the trading group to beta. We've now got our beta trader, which is going to be trading our energy credits, our energy cells, sorry. And uh, hopefully it's going to sell our refined metals as well. 
still producing our last production module, but we're not too worried about that. Hopefully these will start to work for us. Yep, they are. So they're going to go ahead and start mining for us. We're already in the areas kind of set up, so we've not got any worries there. We've also got our... There he is, Mercury Vanguard. I'm looking at the wrong place. He's now undocking. Yep, undocking. Excellent. So he's now going to head over to our station and start dealing with that. Next thing I want to do now is I want to set this station, the solar power station. I'm going to have a look at its funds. Now it's got 600,000 credits. Now remember when I said to you earlier about uh, a, a manager will set its own budget. There is no operation budget. There's nothing at all that it's taking money from. So everything that's come in is things we've sold. The energy credits we've sold. We'll wait for them to stop talking to us. There we go. Now... I haven't tested this. I, I tend to just set things up and do it manually. I'm going to test it on this and hopefully it'll work. I'm going to leave this station to sell to anybody because if we have a look, it's got a decent fill capacity. So we should have enough resources from this to filter to this. Normally what I'd do is I'd do one of two things. I'd manually pick up the resources and I'd fill up the container storage with our energy credits or I will set it so it'll only trade between the factions. I want to try and see if that energy storage will trade between factions and us at the same time. Whereas our mineral production, our, our, our refined metals production will only buy from us. So it should in theory only buy from the one available station we've got. Which is why we left it at the maximum credits. Because it will still see our station as a valuable asset to purchase from. Hopefully our little mining vessel, when he decides to do what he's doing, I don't know what he's doing. Where's he going to? Trading with. So he's going to trade. He's searching for trade. So hopefully he will find a trade at the solar power plant. The solar power plant may... Oh, there you go. Look at that. He's already heading to our station. So it does work. So excellent. So that was one thing I didn't know really if it would do it any good. However, it'll just try and sell it to whatever AI. But it works perfectly, so as you can see, that works there. So that's how you're going to get it to trade with your little solar power station. Now, what you could have done, you could have had the two stations merged into one. But what you're going to then cause yourself is the, the option, basically, of whether you sell to anybody else, um, which means you could bring yourself down in energy credits, uh, in energy cells, so you don't have enough for your own station. But then you can obviously sell your surplus or you could just do as I've done and set two up and then you've got one in a different area which is a high traffic area and you've got another one in a less traffic area kind of out of the way of everything and you've got two stations you've got the potential to expand both and they're not really costing you anything really you know the, the, the energy credit station is just sitting there not costing you anything and collecting you with some nice amounts of credit now what you can do is you can actually empty this this is like your little piggy bank for the station itself so that money is sat in the station it's doing absolutely nothing it's going to keep building that little pot up every time an ai purchases from it you can come back and you can take that amount out you confirm it and it deposits it into your personal bank account now i'm saying it's a personal bank account it's your business bank account because obviously you're running a business here so you've now transferred the funds from your energy cell production so we've given ourselves four and a half million credits and it really didn't take that long it took me probably a couple of hours of sitting here doing nothing whilst i was doing something else you know it really is really quick and we've got a full station out of it as well and again we can choose whether or not we expand this station to you know produce more or something or produce different items but what we're going to do is we're going to let it tick along now Okay, yeah, excellent. So he's now set. He's mining. He's not doing too much at the moment. Hopefully he'll start soon, but he's already on his way. He's got his little mining drones out. He's going to be filled up pretty quickly. Let's have a look and see how he's doing. He's not got anything yet. Well, hopefully he's going to be... Well, they're both going to be enough. I'm hoping it'll set it where basically you'll have one coming in, emptying... The station will start producing and then the second one will come in part way through and then and then top up. Hopefully, that's what we're aiming for. There you go, he's now getting ore. So that's going to refine in the ore refinery and then we're going to deposit it to other places. We've also got a solar power station here. So if we're running short on our station, we can just nip across here and we can purchase some here as well. So, 
that's your station we've built previously all set up and running hopefully by the end of this uh, episode we can see how that's going to do because what we're going to do now is we're going to have a quick talk about fleets uh, and the reason why i'm kind of doing the station and fleets at the same time is because they both kind of operate in a similar way that being that you set up uh, a wing like they like you've done in the station where you set an alpha and a beta wing so alpha is for your mining beta is for your trading you do a similar thing with fleets so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to set up a medium and a small fleet system by that i mean i'm going to buy a medium ship or two medium ships and then i'm going to buy some smaller ships to help with the defense of it when you're building fleets obviously starting off you're going to have low money you're going to have you know not as many um blueprints or anything like that to build your fleet with you're going to be really restricted so you're not going to be able to set up a fleet that's going to take too much of a battery you want to do your fleet setup like you would expect a navy fleet to be like you'd have an aircraft carrier or a, a two aircraft carriers which we obviously call carriers um fleet carriers whatever you want to call them you then have the largest ships to defend them with so a battleship or something like that you then have the smaller ships you destroy your type ships your mediums or your large your small large ships um or even some of your large ships because the extra large ships are you carry your battleships down you want a few of them so you're going to want three or four of them then you're going to want to fill up the rest of your fleet with small and medium ships and the reason for that is is this game has a tendency to pick up your weaknesses in your fleet and exploit that weakness in the sense of they will just come with mass numbers and they will just swarm your large ships your large ship turrets won't be able to open fire on every ship at once and they'll take them down quite easily i have lost many fleet carriers to overwhelming numbers when I thought to myself, ah, oh, I'm, I'm well, you know, well out numbering them here. And all of a sudden, there's another fleet coming in and wiping me out. Bear that in mind, so you set your fleet up in, in a predictable way. Um, what you, How you set your fleet up is completely up to you. Um, the cost and everything obviously reflects how well the fleet's going to do, but, you know, you, you still got the opportunity of adding to that fleet later on. But without further ado, let's go to our Argon Wharf. And let's buy some ships so we can start building a fleet. We've got our 10 small ships out there already. I'm not going to touch them because I'm going to use them to continue for, uh, doing some exploring for us. Because we've got a lot to cover in later episodes. So we've still got that stuff to do yet. Um, so we're going to leave them there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a small uh, medium ship. Sorry. Now, we've got our frigates and we've got our gunboats. These are what you buy your licenses for so you can see you need a federation military ship license so if you haven't got one or it's saying you need one like i showed you earlier about getting the licenses you just head on up there and you can buy it from them you need the reputation for it uh, and i'll go through reputation on another video because that is quite a, an expansive thing to do uh, if you if you need to know then please comment and i'll go through with you it's not a problem uh, but you, you need, you're going to need a military, how was it, military ship license for that one. Now, the this depends on what you want to do now. They, they have various station. options for you that you can choose to do. So, obviously, a gunboat's a smaller ship. But it looks smaller. It has a crew of 10, so it gives you some details here on what it can do. What you're best doing is, is if you set it to high preset, that's the that's the maximum capability the ship can have in theory you can still tweak things around and stuff like that but this is the highest preset so it'll give you an idea of what it does and you can see here you got your acceleration your speed how quick it can roll and stuff like that it's container storage yeah you don't need to worry too much about that obviously we don't have it trade in but you can have it where it'll pick up some small items it's crew size which again isn't exactly 9 out of 10 man obviously captain is mandatory it's 10 out of 10 so that's the most the crew it can carry which i'll tell you here see that 10 there how many missiles it can carry how many deployables it can carry and how many countermeasures it can carry it'll also tell you what its ship capacity is and as you can see it can't hold any ships at all for a gunboat because it's a gunboat it flies around and it's heavily armored and it will attack anything it can now if we flip over to our frigate, you can see that this can carry one small ship. It's got a small dock on it. And it's pretty useful that because what you can do is, is you can actually have this set up in a way where you've got a frigate and a small ship. 
defending something else. So obviously your small ships are quite slow. These can have bigger engines on them. But what the small ship will do, it'll dock with the frigate and then the frigate will become its, its carrier. That frigate in turn can also dock. But at this small stage, we don't need to worry about that. Another thing I would necessarily worry about at this stage is whether or not it can actually carry ships. Because the likelihood is, is you're not going to dock ships with this ship. But it does give you an idea of what else it can carry. We can have a crew of 15, 12 units. If we actually, before we do that, let's set it up to our high preset. We can see it's got a small ship capacity, it's got a larger container storage. It's also pretty fast as well. It's got a decent sized hull and shield as well for what it is. It's also got its radar range and all that kind of stuff and what you expect from the turrets that we've set up. There's our consumables that we have. Can we set up any more than that? Now up to 12, as it says, there are 12 units there. Defense drone's pretty decent, pretty useful. They'll take out things like torpedoes and missiles coming towards you, which is really handy. Obviously, you've got your larger engines. So there's, there's pros and cons to both. This one is obviously a little bit harder to kill, but it's also a bigger target to hit. So this boils down to what you're comfortable doing because as well, it's also a lot more expensive. That's four and a half million. So that takes up every penny we've got to build one ship. Whereas the gunboat was about three and a half million. Set that up there, set it back to the highest preset. 3.8 million. You gotta bear in mind your cost versus what you can afford. We would like to remind all visitors to visit our What we're gonna do is we're gonna place ourselves to the something a little bit smaller. Like so. I'm gonna double check to make sure that it's got enough crew it doesn't so we're going to place it with four crew members at the moment consumables it's got one defense drone we'll just chuck it a second defense drone check the software we'll place a second a mark ii docking computer and then everything else we'll leave as is we'll leave the turrets leave everything like that it's got itself some defense capabilities some weaponry fire and stuff like that it's it's our first ship so we don't need to worry about too much we're going to add that to our shopping list we're then going to add a gunboat as well. So we'll grab one of these. Low preset. We'll do the same again. Make sure we've got a couple of crew members. We'll just add two crew members. It's smaller crew compatibility here. We'll make sure it's got a docking computer, Mark II. Consumables. I'm not too worried about consumables. We'll leave them for this one. We'll add that to our shopping list. 8,000. We're now up to 1.9 million. We're then going to go to our small ships. We're going to go to have a look at what we've got. We've got a heavy fighter and we've got... Well, we've got two heavy fighters, which both require the military ship license. That's why they've got them stars on. We've got a normal fighter. We've got a scout, an interceptor, and two couriers. The couriers are not really the best thing to use for attacking. You can attack if you really want them to, but they're no good. Since this is our first fleet and we're going to expand on our fleet, we, we, we've got plenty of elite vanguards. We've got a few Nova Vanguards, but I do like the Nova Vanguards, they're pretty cool. So what we're going to do is, you can have a look at the high preset, it's 2.5 million for a Nova Vanguard. We're set to low preset, 242,000. Nice and cheap, but it's not going to last very long. But what we're going to do is, is we're going to leave the crew numbers and everything like that. It's basically just got a captain. We're just going to leave this because these are pretty expendable. Or they're going to be when they get blown up. Everything else we'll leave as is. We'll leave it with the same docking computer. The likelihood is, is they won't dock. And if we need them to dock more long term, we can upgrade that at a later stage. So I'm going to add that to our shopping list. And then we're going to change the amount to have a bit of a fleet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have four on one and four on the other. So we're going to try and get eight there. And we can get eight. Fantastic. Leaves us with just under a million left. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and get myself a heavy fighter. Let's see if we can get two heavy fight we can get two heavy fighters and i love the um argon heavy fighters which is why i always tend to go for the argon i, lo I love the look of the argon heavy fighters they look pretty cool they look evil and they have quite a good armament uh, the only downside to it is is these here are actually weapons which is a shame if they were weapons they'd look awesome i don't know if they're classes like intakes or something like that i don't know uh, but the the it's a shame they're not. They're, they're like the old style um, Babylon 5 ships. That's how, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, is it the Star Fury or something like that? I'm, my memory doesn't serve me, but it does look a lot like that and I love them. So, 
There's two heavy fighters we're going to add. We're not going to change the name. Uh, they can stay as Quasar Vanguards and stuff like that. But we're not going to worry about the change of the names at the moment. You can rename everything, make it all personal to yourself. Absolutely no problems with that. We're going to confirm that order now and leaves us with about half a million left. Do We've already set up our budget for our, our refinery. It's got its budget. It is asking for more money. We'll set that. We'll, like, we'll accept the estimate. Taking every penny we've got now. And we're about at the stage where we need to be. So we've got 2,000 left. It's asking for this because it's expecting to purchase the ore and it's expecting to purchase the cells. And it's also setting up the uh, the drones as well. So obviously it's purchasing all the drone materials to build the drones. Obviously them we can't supply. So unfortunately we're having to buy them. Once it's bought them... Yep, doesn't need any more. So the station construction is complete now. Excellent. And it looks like it's starting to... It's starting to build yet. Energy cells. Refined metals. It's not done any refined metals yet, but we have got plenty of energy cells. We're completely full on energy cells by the looks of it. Oh, no. No, no. We've got plenty of room, so we can have 3,000 energy cells. So we're about halfway to what we want. Uh, that's in build storage. Oh, that one. Sorry. I do apologize. That's the build storage. We don't need to worry about that. This is the one we want to look at now because it's complete. We've got our own storage now. This is what you want to keep an eye out, making sure you don't run out of space. Fantastic. So we're set up. We've got our budget. We can meet the budget. So hopefully the drones will be produced quickly. And we should hopefully start to see production line coming from that once we've produced our fleet. We can do two things at once. Fantastic. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small break here. Uh, for you guys, it'll be instantaneous. But for me, I'll have to wait for them to build the rest of the ships. You want to know how they're doing? You're obviously, check it out in your ships in construction on your property on tab. As you can see, it's going to take one, two, three, four. It could build all four of them together. If it doesn't build all four of them together, then you're looking at about 45 minutes. Looks like it's just okay, it's just set them off. So 10 minutes, and we'll have a capable uh, number of ships for our fleet. So let's pop back and let's get it set up after that. And welcome back everybody, we've got our ships all sorted now, ready to go and setting up a little bit of a fleet. So, we're going to set up two fleets here I think, because if we set one underneath another, well we could do, but we're going to set up two so then we can have two separate fleets operating and we can hopefully find ourselves some space where we can actually expand and have a look at taking out some enemy, at least doing some little bit of a forward scouting operation and we can try and cut out some enemy that'll generate some revenue as well for us but it could also push the war efforts as well now there are war efforts hanging around on this map that people are pushing as you can see profit center alphas being attacked i think that's been attacked a few times grand exchange has now been taken by the taladi so they're the there's you know there's certain areas where people are taking over and stuff like that we do want to claim our own area at some stage Probably something here or maybe something further down. We'll, we'll figure somewhere out. We may even take over the Reach and push the Argon out once we've got everything we want from them. Obviously, that causes issue with rep, but when you've got the shipbuilding capabilities of their style, then you can decide what you want to do with them. But for now, let's get our fleet sorted. So, we've got our two heavy fighters. We've got our Nova Vanguards there, our eight Nova Vanguards. We've also got our Cerebus Vanguard. And where is our other and it's all Vanguard there. Security what I'm going to do is I'm going to set four Nova Vanguards to one Quasar Vanguard. So we can assign the roles here. So what we can do is we can actually set two of our Nova Vanguards to be an attack attack role. So we'll set Alpha as the attack. And what it should do... There we go. It creates a fleet for you. That fleet now, if we press this little plus button here, it tells you what's in your alpha group. We're going to then set one to our Quasar Vanguard as defense. Call that beta. Again, sets it up as a group. And one of our vanguards as an interception. Gamma. So there you have it. Your first fleet. And again, it'll tell you now it's escorting the ships. 
undocking. That's on the undocking as well. So it's all escorting the ships now. So it'll follow around the large ship which is currently holding position. We have a look where he is. He's out here somewhere. He's just there. As you can see, they're all kind of hovering around him. Now, if we just bring him out here. Now, what we can do is we can then set our Quasar Vanguard to be our Cerebus Vanguard's attack, defense, or interception role. So let's set him as a defense, shall we? Alpha defense. There we go. Test it up. Reavers. Was that Quasar Vanguard? Reavers Vanguard. Time roll. Alpha defense. There we go. So now what we've got is we've technically got a fleet within a fleet. This is like a tree of operations. If you imagine doing a tree. So you've got your top hierarchy, your biggest ship at the top, breaks down into two, breaks down, then each of them breaks down into three or four. That's how the fleet system works. And obviously the main one is your top one. So whatever you tell your Cerebus Vanguard to do, we set him to go over here. And as you can see, they're all coming back because our Cerebus Vanguard is at our docking station. And that's why I left him, pushed him out there. So you can see that they will return to where the bigger ship is. We tell them to fly there. They will still go to line up with him and he'll continue on his path going wherever. Now sometimes they will wait for the other ships to come to them before they part. That's generally what the carriers will do. The carriers will wait for the ships to dock or what ships can dock to dock. Then it will travel further out to wherever you set it to go. What you can do here is, is, is your one fleet can now do you know multiple things you, you don't need to you don't need to set your individual ships doing things they will all do it within the fleet and whatever you're telling it to do if you go into one location you're not having to select multiple people all the time to do it and you can you can see at a quick glance of what each one's doing so even though the quasar vanguard is defending our cerebus vanguard the quasar vanguard's alpha group will attack so anything hostile now he will attack and take them out Anything that threatens the Cerebus Vanguard, the Quasar Vanguard, plus its fleet of defense and interception ships will go in. If you happen to have it in a different area, the attack ships won't bother doing anything. They'll wait until they go into range from the Quasar Vanguard and then attack. So that's how the fleets kind of work. It's, it's a very simple and effective method, but that's about it. There's nothing really much more you need to know other than the fact that, you know, you've got them all there. You can see which one is your leading ship by the, the, the little like little crown above it as you can see there Awaiting orders. the crazy vanguard is there cerebus vanguard is there now because your crazy vanguard is the alpha group of cerebus it's with it and the other ships are now catching up with it and you can shut it down the other good thing about that is is as you can see now there is none of them ships on your unassigned ships list Unassigned ships are ships that are not assigned to a fleet. That's all it is. So it tidies up your screen a little bit. But you can really reduce these down. Like considerably. You drop them completely down. You can drop down your stations. You've got your fleet separate there. So if you need to see, you can see them at a glance. It'll tell you what they're all doing. You still get the same things. Flying weight. It'll tell you what the composition is. You've got one medium ship and five small ships. Even though your heavy fighters in there, it's still classed as a small ship. So that's setting up fleets and we'll do the same for this here as well so same thing you do you select two nova vanguards right click uh, i'm wrong because that's the quasar there right click to attack alpha one nova vanguard to defense beta I misclick that I did misclick that defense no i didn't he's got it a little bit behind and then one quasar to interception Gamma. We'll then set our Quasar Vanguard. You could have done it first. You could have set the Quasar to Minotaur, then the other ships to the Quasar, but there isn't really anything you can, you know, there isn't really massive differences how you do it. But it still replaces it like such. We'll reduce that down now. And there you go. We've got our two ship fleets, and we can do whatever we need to do with them. 
I like to have a couple of fleets, even though they're in the same area, or we're going to ha effectively have them in the same area. You can still do everything you want with them. And later when we get a large ship built, which we will probably do, because we've got about 1.8 million credits, so we'll have a look and see what we can build with large ships. We're going to assign the two fleets to the large ship, and then you've got yourself again, two separate fleets. Let's see what we can build with large. So we can build destroyers, uh, just the two destroyers. So we've got the Behemoth Vanguard and the Balor Escort. Kind of like the look of the Balor Escort, so I'm going to go for that. But as you can see, look at the price of it. It's ridiculously expensive compared to what we were buying. 3.3 million credits. So at this stage, we're not actually going to be able to buy one. Uh, they're all freighters. And we probably look at buying a freighter to assign to our new station before we build a large ship. But that's it for this episode. As I say, we've covered a couple of things. We've covered our station. Now, I did, want to, I did mention I would have a look at it. Let's have a look at our logical overview. So we've got energy cells. What are you worried about? Oh, oh that's saying it's... Yeah, that's fine. That's saying it's only trading with our faction. We have no ore at the moment. But we have two large mining ships coming in with worse. Our station account is... The estimate it wants. We've got no drone set. So let's set let's set 20 cargo drones we'll set 10 defense drones and five repair drones there we go and that's increased our station budget that's absolutely fine we'll set that to the right budget so supply budget is for our drones so i was correct earlier when i said that it's counting energy cells and ores it looks like it's actually just taking our energy cells for the production of the drones. Interesting. That's absolutely fine, because we still haven't got the ore yet. So, how are we looking for ore? It looks like they're still collecting ore. Have a look at the information. It is. So, we're still collecting the ore at the moment, so it's been a little bit slow finding the ore. Once they're both filled, they'll come to the station stock up the station and then it'll start producing our refined metals plenty of time for us to get the energy cells that we need what are you doing here you've actually got energy cells on board so you may be looking for trading with argon prime solar panels. so it looks like you're actually selling them so what it looks like he's actually done is he's had no uh, he's not selling them oh it's ours trading with our yeah so it's trading with our one sorry Argon Prime solar power plant. He just cut off the solar power plant too, so I could see it was our one. But it is. He's trading with ours. Hopefully, it'll request it at our ore refinery so we can drop off these 2,400 it's got. It may not require it just yet because it still thinks it's got them ones inside and because it's not building any drones yet. And obviously, we haven't got any ore yet, so we've not technically got any requirements for them. So, I'm going to let this tick over for a little bit. We'll come back on the next episode, we'll review that station, we'll review what we can do with the, with the next station or whether we upgrade this station. Remember please let me know in the comment section below if you'd like to see something different or if you want some clarity on anything else or if you want me to go through anything else, let me know and I will go through that with you. Well, until next time everybody, take care for now and I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye bye for now.